Well, it's that time of the week again. It's time for Chit Chat Across the Pond. This is episode number 793, and I am very excited to invite officially to the family Adam Angst of Tidbits. He's now an official member of the Podca- Podfeet Podcast family as a continuing contributor to Chit Chat Across the Pond. So excited about this, Adam. This is going to be great. Woo. Do, do I get a coffee cup? I don't actually drink coffee, but I think I should get a coffee cup. <laughs> How about a hat? <laughs> We have hats. I, hat. I could wear a hat. There you go. I'll, 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 I'll wear hats. All right. I will make sure you get a hat. They, I think they say 15 on it for my 15-year uh, anniversary, oh. and we're at 19 years, but that's okay. You're old school, right? Oh, totally. I was here 15 years ago, or enough, <laughs> even four years ago. I think you were there a little <laughs> while back. Well, in this week's episode, we were going to talk about, uh, I'm hoping you'll start the story with how hyper-focused you are and why that causes you so much grief with notifications and missing things. Because I think uh, that's the beginning uh, of the story, and it was a, it's just a delightful perspective. Well, so yeah. So this is, it doesn't happen very often, but every now and then, I'll be writing or editing and just working away happily, doing my stuff, you know, writing away, researching things, reading. About my, and all of a sudden, I'll realize that I've been had a notification in the upper corner of my screen for some time, 30 minutes, 15 minutes, an hour, who knows? Oh, um, and I have completely missed what it was telling me about. And, you know, notifications, like they're a dime a dozen. You see lots of them all the time. And you're looking now. You're like, what do I got? What do I got? Yeah, I got yeah. <laughs> and 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 they don't, you know, you mean you, you you Apple gives us two choices, right? We've got the the banners, like the alerts and the banners. And you know, one of them, one of them just comes in and goes away, and the other one comes in and sticks around. But it just sticks around. It doesn't like make you or do anything. Blink. Or anything, or or make us. I mean, it, maybe it makes a sound. I don't know. I mean, it's like uh, that. Sounds don't yeah. do it for me. Yeah. Um, and so, so I forget what exactly it was. I think it was. It might have been a, like a, an appointment, like a doctor appointment or something like that, where I was. I was mortified that I was. Oh. I was late. Um, it's okay because, when they're yeah. late, but we always feel mortified when we're late, right? <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> Yeah. Well, what's what's worse is when you're mortified that you're late and you get there and they're not even ready for you. Yeah. Damn it. <laughs> on the other hand, yes. On the other hand, damn it. <laughs> I could have been waiting here for half an hour. So, so um, yeah. And so, I, so I wrote, wrote this big article because I was like, the problem is that we want alarms as a notification type. So there are some events, a fair number of events, in fact, where time really matters. You know, even Zoom stuff um, where, you know, hey, starts at 3.30. And so we should start at 3.30. And and even if you're only five minutes late or something like that because you got caught up doing something else, you're still, you know, oh, I'm so sorry, I'm late. You can't even blame traffic, right? You know, you got no excuses. And you're one of those people who appreciates things starting on time. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But this is one of the things I think we're always going to get along because I am, <laughs> I'm just vicious about pe- people being late. I have yelled at my own boss for being late to a meeting. It's like, do you realize how much you're costing the company for you to leave the rest of us sitting here with nothing to do? Come on, be on time. <laughs> it's like one of my big pet peeves and people claim they can't be on time. Well, no, that's just wrong. You can just do you, better. You can. Just, I mean, there's always things that can go wrong. They're out of your control. That's sure. not the problem. Right. It's the persistent. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a, right. It's the persistent stuff. So and, when, and, when and you say we need alarms. What do you mean by an alarm? What's an alarm different than a banner or a well, notification? Or well, think about you set an alarm on your on your phone or your watch. It goes off until you do something. Okay. Okay. So it's you continued. can't ignore it. So it's not just sitting on the screen. It's got to be doing something to get in your way. Precisely, because sitting on the screen. I mean. You know, you, I mean, even if, and particularly like on the iPhone, like it'll notify you in your pocket, you know, you'll get a little buzz. You're like, oh, okay. I get lots of little buzzes in my pocket from my iPhone. I do not pull out my <laughs> iPhone every time I get one. Same with even the watch. But that's you know, the best thing guarantee- about the watch is you can go, nope, don't care. Right. Nope, don't care. Yep, Ooh, don't care. Oh, I care. Don't care. <laughs> <laughs> Precisely. But, you know, there's times when, when you think, oh, I, you know, I, I just like, I'm, I'm working here. Don't bug me. Um, and, and that's all fine and nice until you really should have been bugged. Yeah. And so so yeah. you don't want it on everything. No, no, absolutely not. Um, that, that, that there are plenty of things I set reminders, particularly reminders, um, where I say, 
I, I'll tell Siri to remind me about such and such at 9 a.m. or 10 a.m. And that's literally just to put a notification on the screen. Yes, 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 yes. I do this all the time when I'm, when I'm out walking, listening to podcasts, and I want to tell the podcaster they're wrong about something. <laughs> remind me at 10 a.m. because I'm usually back in the house by 10 a.m. Remind me at 10 a.m. to tell Dave Hamilton that he was wrong about blah, blah, blah. That's, that's kind of the thing I do. Or, yes. hey, I heard about a cool piece of software. I want to go download that. Remind me at, at, when I get home or at 10 a.m. Those don't you need have an to, alarm. And you have to have the time in there because otherwise it just adds it to the do list and that's a kiss of death. Because yeah. you yeah. never go and look at the bottom of the to-do list, right? Right, 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 right. I mean, actually, periodically I open reminders like, I don't know, once every couple of months on the Mac and, and happen to see, I was like, I wonder what that was for. <laughs> <You're> like, <laughs> Oh yeah, especially if it's been, you did it in voice. Those are always good. I, I post yeah. those to Mastodon going, so what, what, what was I trying to tell myself? But <laughs> you know what? We should really name that list Overcome by Events, you know, OBE, because it, it will be. I mean, it might as well just call it what it is. I'm actually going to change my name of mine. The ones that don't have times, they're, they're overcome by events. I'm never going to do it. <laughs> See, I always set a time. So mm -hmm. if I don't, it's usually like it didn't hear me right, or maybe I okay. get interrupted or something like that. And so those are the ones which I'm actually usually pretty annoyed because I then have forgotten about it for three months. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, so, so, so that's what I do for most stuff. But there are things... Um, tasks, both tasks and events. So, man, we were talking about calendar events before. So, you know, you've got a Zoom meeting you've got to get to, or a doctor's something appointment critical or something like, like this. That. Like this, something recording? absolutely critical. Like I, I now know. Do not leave Allison waiting. <laughs> you know, I'm going to screw up next moment. time. By the way, you just know that's going to be the day <laughs> just, I'm going to miss it. <laughs> so, uh, but but similarly with re with reminders, sometimes you set reminders for something you really really do need to do at a particular time. So like I will remind myself um, sometimes to leave for uh, um, events um, because they're not really calendary things, but it's just like, oh, I need to go do that. And I, I have to do it at this amount at this time. So I'll leave myself a reminder, which is fine unless that is that, like I desperately need to leave at that time. So i give you an example. Um, uh, you know, uh, my, Tanya's running with friends in Dryden nearby town and, you know, um, she'll be done at 7.30 and I'm meeting them. I need to bike there. So I'm meeting them. Mm -hmm. And so this is not something that needs like a calendar event. We actually have a calendar event, but I need to say exactly when it is I need to leave. Right. Because it will take me 90 minutes or something like that. And if I don't do that and get distracted, then I'm just not going to make it on time and it will cause all sorts of confusion for everyone else. So that's the kind of thing where a reminder is a good way of doing that. And, um, but in fact, a timer or an alarm would be a better way because those you can't miss. Right. So why don't you just set an alarm? Um, or, I'm actually I... offended by alarms. <laughs> <laughs> I, the way Apple has done alarms really irritates the Jesus out of me. And the reason is, is because I, 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 how many alarms do you have in your iPhone? Go look. Oh, like 126 that all say 630 or 530, whatever. Precisely. <laughs> They're just wrong. Wrong, yeah, wrong, wrong. Stack up. Um, yeah. So, yeah, so was, why so, aren't alarms ephemeral? Unless you tell it to be, you know, persistent. So, right. So I have, I think, um, like six alarms and I only use one of them, um, which is called floating mm -hmm. and it has a name. And I, and that way I can tell Siri to change the time of floating to something. Oh, so well, I say nice. set floating to 7am. Okay. I'm a little annoyed there too, because Apple used to change the time and turn it on. Now it just changes the time and you have to turn it on <laughs> with another tap. But like, come on. What do you, if you think I'm just, talking to myself here exactly uh, oh wow so well that so, also the, doesn't the, tell you what the alarm is for when it goes off you have to sit there and think what now, was i only I have one do? yeah that but how do you know what it's for it's to wake up i never have any oh you're talking about the waking else. one okay but i mean yeah, if we were to a, use that as a substitute oh, for yeah, this don't right, forget precisely. to leave to meet tanya so, on my bike so the, the other alarms that i have actually are um i do race directing i i direct mm -hmm big running races. And um, for one of the, uh, actually two of the races, they're very tightly time scheduled. And so I have a series of alarms that tell me to do certain things at certain times. And those have to be alarms because again, I cannot miss those times. Okay. You okay. know, this race has to start at this time. So it means that, you know, 15 minutes before I have to make, you know, make a call to get people to go outside and things like that. I can't get caught up in a conversation and it's like, oh, whoops, sorry. And now, <laughs> you know, things have gone. So any event, so, so, 
I only use alarms for for specific things, plus that one floating alarm is just his name for waking up. Okay. And and so if I just did alarms, which I, I kind of like the idea of doing them, I would end up with 126 like you have. Mm-hmm. And and it would it would just bug me. There's yeah. too many, they'd be completely worthless. And you know, like why why do I have it's all these the random tool. alarms? Right. It's the wrong tool. And so there is the, you know, like you can when you create um, you know, you can for each app or for different events, you can type different kinds of notifications. And I want one that cannot be missed. Persistent notifications. Okay. And so an alarm type of notification would solve that, where you could say, okay, for this one, really important that you alert me at the appropriate time. Okay. And and there's sort of, there's a couple of ways of sort of doing that in calendar. Um, I mean, you found one of them um, with having it open a file. Yeah. Well, actually, I think you suggested that. And then I thought, I thought it said it could open the calendar, which would have been good if the calendar jumped up in your face. You go, oh, I have a meeting coming up. But it doesn't seem to do anything if if you just leave it at the default of calendar. And then I tried, yeah. I tried doing a shortcut to open calendar and it opens shortcuts. Like I right, atta- the file it's, it's I attached literally was the shortcut, the but it, isn't, it wasn't running the to, shortcut. You, if you made an automator app. Yeah. That did it. That would probably work. What I'll, yeah, right. Because it actually has to open the file. So, so I mean, what my the example that I used was a was a uh, an audio file, which will open and start playing. Okay. And, and oh, that's uh, right. That's right. What was the name <laughs> of the <this> song? <laughs> Your goat is on fire. <laughs> Your goat is on fire. And, and then which, which he sent the it song to me doesn't too, actually which completely awesome. live up to its name, but the name is so good. <laughs> Right, right. So, uh, does did that work for you? No, because I don't use I don't use calendar. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I don't like calendar at all. Okay, I really prefer Fantastic Cal. Busy Cal is also pretty good, but um, calendar and context have always always bugged me in terms of I, I think they're kind of weak apps. Okay. Um, but this is one thing that that Fantastic Cal doesn't have is this option to to do other to other kinds file. of alarms. Okay. Yeah, um, and you know, and I think it it feels a little bit it's. It's fussy too, right? It's not. It's not exactly. It's not exactly what I'm looking for. What I'm looking for is for Apple to just solve my problem. I mean, I like come the on. word. I like the word fussy for it. Like the last. I always use the word fiddly. Like the last <laughs> thing in the world you want is fiddly when you're trying to make sure you don't miss something. Precisely. Precisely. It needs to be easy. So, um, so, so basically, this this started, you know, kind of the quest of surely there's something that out, is out there. Don't call me Shirley, um, but. Uh, the uh, the first thing that I ran into is this this neat little Mac utility called In Your Face. Oh my which god! Is, I down I downloaded it. It is In Your Face. That it is fabulous. <laughs> yeah, you know the the whole concept of you know we should put up a you know something you can't miss. It takes over your entire screen, yeah. and it's it's got so many options. It lets you choose which screen to take over if you have multiple ones, or it can do both of them. <laughs> you know, like. There is no missing this. And actually, there's probably a few things you want to use that app for once you find out about it. I, I believe was that one of the ones that was in setup? Yes. And I've been yeah. trying to yeah. remember remember to use setup because I pay for it and don't hardly use anything in it. So I, <laughs> I'm all excited because I can download this and try it out. But yeah, that might be one where it's like, you know, I actually have to leave for the airport. Like that would right. be a good one right. to have in your face. Don't miss this one. Precisely, and um, and it, and you know, it, it's very good. It lets you pick calendars because, of course, you know, leaving for the airport is probably not on the calendar with oh, I don't know, you know, birthdays or something like mm-hmm. that. Right? You know, you don't need to be alerted so and so's birthday. You stop everything you're doing. Um, oh, but it does have to be an entire calendar. Yes, so you almost yes, have you to have a, like particular calendars. don't miss. Like on my calendar right. are rocket launches because for some reason Steve invites me to those events so that he can sit in front of his his Mac and watch rockets launch. Like the Ariane Six went off this morning. Those are in my calendar, so I probably <laughs> I'd have to make a don't miss calendar. Right, right. The the ones that I really care about. Um, yeah. So. Um, yes, and the same with reminders. And actually, with reminders, I don't use it for any of the, any any of the reminders lists because, in fact, those are not that important. And another have another app that deals with those, as I'll talk about in a minute. Um, 
So, but, uh, but interface is pretty darn good. Um, you know, it's, you know, it, it does solve the problem. Um, the only issue that it, thing it doesn't do is it doesn't work if you're not at your Mac. Oh, okay. Yeah, So if right? I'm fooling around on, on TikTok, laying down on my bed watching TikTok in the bedroom, it's not going to tell me that. <laughs> you are so going to miss your appointment. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. So for uh, the Mac bound, yeah. an interesting solution. An interesting solution, and and is that certainly worth certainly worth including? Because in fact, for me, most of the time when I get caught up in doing something, it really is because I'm writing, yeah. and and I can just zone out and not notice anything for hours. I mean, I'm one of those people who like, you know, three o'clock, crap, I should have lunch, you know, like <laughs> I, I just forget. I, I don't. I, think I thought that eat. was one of the best parts about that article was getting an insight into Adam's brain. <laughs> Of well, and it's and it's why you're as productive as you are, right? Because I'm I'm a little I mean I'm fairly productive, but it's a miracle that I'm as productive as I am because I'm just like ricochet rabbit looking at garbage <laughs> on my computer while I'm writing. I mean I'm writing paper notes, I've got post-it notes, I've got reminders going, I've got to dos in every single application. I mean I'm just flying all over the place. But you sit down and write. <laughs> In theory, I will admit, uh, it does feel like it's gotten harder over the past, you know, five or 10 mm -hmm. years. Mm -hmm. uh, but, uh, but yes, when, I'm, when I've actually gotten, and that's part of it, like when I have gotten focused, I don't want to be distracted. And right. so I'm more likely to, to, to eliminate, you know, those outside distractions. Right. Uh, but, uh, um, so yeah, so okay, so I was like, okay, so fine, what about, what about the iPhone? Is there something for the iPhone? And this was actually recommended in, by people, and they, when I wrote the first article, I was like, oh, you got to check out this app. It's called Do, D-U-E, um, and um, the, uh, it's, it's, uh, it's great, well, first of all, it's only reminders. This is, this is sort of my main, my main problem with it, is it doesn't solve the calendar problem. It only solves it for reminders. Oh, okay. And it doesn't sync with reminders. It can import from reminders, Apple's reminders. Oh. So it's its own thing. It's its own little world. But once you're in its world, which is a little bit of a funky interface world, but once you're in there, boy, does it do what it says it does, um, which is just nag you until you say that you've done something. I think, and, by the way, I think Bart reviewed do many years ago and I tried it yeah. and, and I forget why I didn't do it, but if it doesn't work with reminders, which yeah. is where I'm, I'm reminding myself to tell Dave Hamilton that he's wrong. Right. Precisely. And that's one of my big issues too, is that it doesn't, um, it, you know, he had the, the developer has, I think three pages about how three support, separate support pages about how to get it to work with Siri. Um, you know, the, the deprecated method, um, the new method that sort of works, and then the new method that sort of sort of works in other ways. But you know, it's like, do you do Siri shortcuts? Do you do Siri Kit? You know, do you do this? And um, but part of the problem is, is that the name of the app "do" is really a worthless word for to tell Siri. Oh. Siri is never going to get that right. So even if it knew you were talking D U E, it would misinterpret it's, that anyway. But it's probably hearing D O. Yeah, precisely. And so, so he has, he, he suggests using Siri shortcuts and I tried it all and it didn't, it just wasn't reliable enough. I mean, this, you know, as you say, this is the thing with reminders is just that you can say, remind me to, you know, tell Dave Hamilton he's wrong and poof, it does. Right, um, right. You know, it, you know, it may hear you a little weirdly, but it's really reliable otherwise. Okay. So do is not the uh, is not the answer to life, the universe, no, and everything either. It is not. It is not. But on the other hand, you know, the people who like it, um, one of the things like people who have to take medications on very specific schedules. Oh, okay. That's the that seems to be like the super big win. Um, you know, it's like I have to take this this medication every four hours, and I cannot delay. You know, like it's not okay to go six hours or something like that. Right, right. Um, I am, and that is a great use case. I am just terrible when it's, I mean, like my daily vitamins, I'm pretty good at that one, you know, or there's yeah. a pill I take every morning or a pill I take every night. That's easy enough. Uh, yeah. But when it's something I don't normally take, like an antibiotic, man, you got to take those on time. You got to take, not miss any. And I'm <clears> terrible at that. I'll just go, well, I'm there in two days. That's going to work out great. 
<laughs> Precisely. And, you know, and there are, and I gather there are other medications which, you know, are really important, you know, heart medications or those kinds of things where you just can't miss. Yeah. And so having something like this where it's simply not optional. You can't actually do, you know, do get away with missing it because every device is going off on you yeah. and, and will continue going off on a schedule you set. So it's like every minute, every 15 minutes, every hour, whatever you want. I, I think I mean, 15 minutes may be the shortest, um, but uh, but in this particular one, but it's, you know, it's it's definitely, you know, nag me until I, until I until I, co- I acquiesce <laughs> and actually do the thing. You know, it makes me think that maybe maybe the problem is us, <laughs> you know, <laughs> because as soon as you think about it, I'm, I want this thing to nag me, I want it to tell me, never, ever forget, don't miss it, got to make sure I'm going to do it. And then what are we looking for? I need a way to dismiss that. <laughs> or I can't I have this, put hardly I have this anything in there. I have this anti-authoritarian bent where I don't like people to tell me what to do. <laughs> I don't even like me to tell me what to do. <laughs> And so I set these things up and after a while, I'm like, go away. <laughs> You're bugging me. <laughs> right, right. I, I think we all do that. I know if a lot of people really hated the uh, Apple telling you to stand up every hour. Yeah. Don't you be the boss of me. <laughs> well, the hardest thing for me is remembering to stand up. I know you use a standing desk, but I, if you look at my exercise schedule, it's like you can see this huge spike first thing in the morning, and then you see no motion until I maybe go to the <laughs> kitchen for lunch. And then you see no motion till about five when I take the dog for a walk, and then there's another big spike, and then I'm on the couch. You know, So I actually need that one. And I, like I can't tell you how many days I didn't stand up 12 times. Yeah, I'm yeah, awake yeah. a lot more hours than 12. <laughs> I, I actually, I turned that one off because it would actually yell at me for not standing up, even though I was standing the entire time. Yeah. yeah. When because it, does it didn't that, know that I had sat, I had sat down, I never sat down. Right, right. Didn't um, check the change in motion. Yeah. So, so it, it really is an interesting problem. And, and I find that it's a little bit like to-dos. Like I actually am pretty good at I've, like I've really settled in this reminders thing for the the little to dos you know that mm-hmm. I have to do this little thing I will need to remind me to do it I will do Water it and I'm salt. done. Um, but like the whole task management systems you know mm-hmm. getting things done while you'll have projects and due dates and blah I love those things <laughs> and I use them for about two months. <laughs> <laughs> until it just starts to annoy me and I stop using it slowly. And then, oh, look, I used to use that thing. Here's this, that stuff I was doing two years ago. Um, I really I really think that you like have to switch them every three months, but to keep it fresh. Um, well, maybe, that's, maybe that's the trick. Set up a schedule. I'm going to use this one for, for two months and then I get to play with a different one. Yeah. And then, yeah. but... Now, are you allowed to leave all those tasks behind when you do the next one? <laughs> As I said, kiss of death. Put them in there. You're never going to do them. Move along. Um, yeah. No, I'm a, I, I've, I've really become a great believer in, um, you know, there's certain things just have to happen. Mm-hmm. And, and yes, you know, like reminders is good for that. Um, you know, and I'll leave my stuff. I'll, I'll leave myself reminders for far in the future. You know, I have to do this on September yeah. 1st. You yeah, know, yeah. I don't know, just goes away. I don't even think about it. But the whole like working out all the little things I have to do in a project and whatnot, gets a death. You know, I don't like being, I don't like me telling me what to do. <laughs> um, and like, I can remember that. Go away. And I do remember it as it turns out. So it's never, never really a problem. <laughs> Yeah, I remember years ago, David Roth, a friend of mine, talking about how he finally had to stop testing getting things done apps because that's all he was doing. He was like on his eighth one and he was just like, if I could just find the perfect getting things done app, then I would get things done. Um, He's on another one now. He was just showing me, uh, I can't remember the name of it, but uh, it's, I, I got really into that. But I got really into it when I was in a position where uh, my job was basically taken away from me, where I didn't have anything to do at work. Oh, note plan. That's the one he's into oh. right now. So try that one next. Um, <laughs> Yay. New, but, new kind of new fun. Yeah. I mean, it integrates. It's got today's goals. you got ideas you can put in there. It's got reminders. Oh, it's got calendar. It's all built perfect. in. Perfect. <laughs> two months. Two months tops. 
<laughs> then I lose all of it. It sounds great. Start all over again. Right, right. <laughs> Um, um, but, but I got really into doing the whole getting things done thing and I labeled all my folders and everything. But the only reason I had the time to do any of that was because I didn't have anything I needed to get done. As soon as yeah. I got some work to do, it was just like, poof, that was all down the toilet. Yep. Yep. Yeah. So, so I'm very, I'm, I, I, I believe in kind of the, you know, survival of the fittest tasks, mm. you know, yeah. that, that the, the tasks that need to get done will get done. They will. And. And and everything else, you know, will happen. It, it has to compete in a certain way, you know. Like if I'm sufficiently intrigued by it, I'll go and do it, even though I've got more important things to do. <laughs> yeah, it, that is probably my biggest problem. Is I'll say, okay, Tuesday, Tuesday, it's Tuesday. I've, I've really I got a presentation this coming Friday, and I'm I'm almost done writing it, right? And uh, but the one for Sunday, it's not done yet. And I, but I'll sit down and think, oh, well, you know, I really should answer Tom Merritt because he just wrote me something funny, you know, it's just, let, let me, let me just clear that off the deck first, you know? And yeah, so I'm, yeah. I'm the person putting all the little pebbles into the, into the jar first and then going, oh shoot, it's seven o'clock <laughs> and I haven't put the big rock into the jar yet. <laughs> Been there, done that so, so many times. You know, I have um, one idea for you for uh, notifications to make them work. And yeah. that is to, uh, you're, you're on a 27-inch iMac, right? Yes. Change your screen resolution real low, and then the notification takes up so much of the screen that you <laughs> have to do it. So I started noticing a while ago that uh, Apple has lost its mind on being able to manage junk, uh, junk spam. Mm -hmm. I got the same email the last three days in a row about enlarging something that I don't think should have gone into my inbox. And yet I wrote an email to my mother-in-law who is in my contacts. And when she replied, Apple put it into my junk folder. So I, Dave Hamilton suggested this. He said, just set up a reminder to check it every couple of days. Well, I, I check mine every day because it's about 75 junk mails I have to go through just in a day. Mm. Well, it depends. Sundays, it's only like 15. So people sleep in on Sunday, I guess. So, but <laughs> the problem is on my on my 14-inch MacBook Pro, that reminder actually covers enough of the, the screen that I can't get to things I need to get to in the upper right of my oh, screen. And so I yeah. do it because I'm not allowed to clear that notification until I do it. So just ruin your screen resolution. <laughs> you know? In other words, did you know, get, get rid of all, you know, re remove all productivity to main, make sure that notifications are seen. <laughs> Make notifications front and center. <laughs> exactly. Well, maybe that's it. Maybe that's part of it, though. Is that's their their location too, right? It does. It does feel like if you could put them in other spots. Yeah. I, well, this, wait. This is horrible. Tell me. You tell me they have to go where they have to go. You can't change the position of them. I've never thought to change the position of them. Well, how do I make them? I think it the, depends on which kind they are. Uh, let's see. No, they always they always come up in the upper right corner for me. No, but it's a, a, not, a notification can be a banner or whatever, right? Yeah. Um, actually, we probably go to reminders is what I'm looking for. Where are reminders? You know, they should completely redesign system settings for us. <laughs> I yeah. Where I can't find anything in here. I can't find reminders. It's in here somewhere, right? Is it under notifications? Yes, uh, be under it is. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So none banners and those disappear we don't want those and then alerts show yeah, time sensitive right. alerts show notifications on lock screen show a notification center badge application icon that's not going to help you don't keep reminders icon up on screen play sound for notification i've never heard it make a sound mine's i on. have it checked i have it checked too never yeah, i never it. noticed the sound show previews um, default always when unlocked and never i think that's like home screen kind of stuff lock screen oh. kind of stuff i never i never i never see that screen so i've never seen yeah those. i've never seen it uh, nope and then the groupings also yeah so um yeah it does not look like there's any way to um to move the notifications which is i mean i actually have two issues with that one is um that when i have arc in full screen um i actually do 
sometimes leave like to leave notifications in the upper right because it's that like oh tell Dave Hamilton something um, and I just want to leave it there until I get around to doing it. Okay. Um, okay. And uh, and um, and but then it, it it obscures the corner of Arc where yeah. there's certain util certain things like um, in Design Google items. Docs and it's where the share item is. Okay. Or it's there's window controls that are up there for Arc for split screen and stuff like that. So it's actually kind of annoying to have those there. Right. But, but see, you'll but do yes, them. Because it's annoying well, to have those there. Well, the problem is, is that, yeah, the problem is I leave them, I leave them, you know, they leave those there because that's, those are the ones I'm like, oh yeah, I'm going to do that in a minute when I finish this other thing. Uh -huh. uh, and now you can't finish but, the other uh, thing because it's in the yeah, way. Yeah, precisely. Actually, I think if you, can't you clear them and then they go away for a couple seconds? They go away for some short period you, of time, I think. No, once you clear them, they, come, they go away forever. No, no, that's no, no. I'm not saying, no, if it's a reminder notification. If you if you have to say comp uh, finished or done or whatever, if, oh no, you just you just close it and it goes away. You never see no, it again. Well, but I'm saying clear, so you can clear notifications and then they they come back if you haven't done them. Really? Oh, huh. I I'm not I I'm not I'm not aware that was a difference. Well, it depends. I think it's only for reminders because like I'm looking at I've got eight thousand Telegram message um, notifications. I can clear all. I'm sure those won't come back. Um, but reminders, I'm pretty sure they go away. Okay. Let me, I mean, they, I, I'm sure they go away and come back. I'm pretty sure. Okay. So it is four, I'm setting one for 425. <laughs> Real time. You, you, you test these things. You're like, okay, I need it now. <laughs> so this is another um, reason you and I are going to do so well. And people are either going to love this or they're going to hate it. We will have no <laughs> balance in our need to, uh, research and know the actual answer, right? Because I, I think we're the same person in that is we'll like, just keep digging and digging and digging until no, we there, find there, the There truth. needs to be an answer, right? <laughs> right, right, right. And the detail of, you know, it, I don't know if you've read much of what I've written, but I'll just go off into the, well, wait a minute, now I need to understand the math of how the battery curve works on lithium ion batteries and I'll take you to battery university and all you wanted to know was, can I charge my Mac with this battery? <laughs> <laughs> you may have more more math and engineering background than I do, but yes. But in, that level in, of in research till yep. you know the answer. Like, do you know yes. that this doesn't exist? You know, I've, right. I've exhausted Precisely. this to a certain point. So well, part of it is I don't like being told that I'm wrong. So. <laughs> I, I know. I, I'm getting better at that. I am getting better the, at that uh, one. The uh, telling people they're pra wrong? Practice. Oh, yeah. Yep. I'm, I'm real. I've never had trouble with that. <laughs> Uh, so, uh, so I did just learn about another iPhone app, um, which looks like it does, it might be sort of the, all, the iPhone version of in your face. Oh, it's called it called? Cal alarm. Cal I haven't alarm. written about this yet. I've just, okay. just started trying it. Okay. And, um, and it has a, you know, nag me every minute kind of, you know, you can set the, the, the time time period, but you nag me every minute until I uh, go do the event. Okay, so my task will come up. It says, time sensitive, remind me about something. I, I cannot move it. Is there I can, a clear, I can slide it away. hover? If I, I have options, I have snooze or complete task. But if you, a lot of, if you exit no away. If I exit away, it without, will not come back. I think it will. Because if you haven't said completed, I think it comes nope. back. Well, might some future time, long yeah. ago, in the distant future. I don't know when. I think it'll come back soon because I do that okay. sometimes to make get it out of my face, and it's like shoot, it came back. Okay, we'll see. Because I don't, well, I'm not so sure about that. But <laughs> all right. Uh, so anyway, so yeah, so Cal Alarm um, looks like it uh, it does the iPhone side of things, but but interestingly, they don't have a Mac app. <laughs> so, and, um, and so it does sync with calendar. So you, your calendar stuff, so it'll pick that up, but it looks like you have to, um, it has a default nag. Um, and like, I don't want to be nagged about every event on my calendar. Oh yeah. Um, but I, it looks like you would have to change the nag setting for each event manually which you'd have to do on the iphone which isn't often where i'm creating the events 
Um, so yeah, we'll see. I mean, it's it, it's actually not a terrible little iPhone calendar app. Um, okay. You know, it's just a slightly different interface to uh, to that. And I said I haven't written about this. I've been using it long enough, but it does it does look like it may be the the combination um, for in your face uh, with, uh, on the Mac. Uh, so and so it, yeah, I will say it does it does nag heavily. So we're like, okay, go away. <laughs> yeah, I think that all of these are probably going to get back to you needing to create a, a calendar that is a you know don't yeah. miss this is the name of the calendar. Or, you know, you really have to do this one. <laughs> Yeah, and the problem with that, of course, is I'm probably the same thing. Is I have a sh I share calendars with Tanya. Okay. And so you know, some there are probably some things that she would put on a calendar that I can't miss, and there are probably you know, and it's so like I, I don't know that it would necessarily work for uh, for the for all of that, but we, I will have to see. Yeah, Steve um, and I for some reason have never embraced shared calendars, but we, what we do instead is we invite each other to our events. So you might notice that Chit Chat Across the Pond, Steve Sheridan was invited. He is not going to show oh. up unless I actually tell him he's allowed to come. But it's so that he <laughs> knows that I'm busy at that time. Oh, interesting. But it's I've never done I've never weird. done invitations much because I found I found the the workflow for them entirely inscrutable. And and fragile. <laughs> and fragile and just yeah. just like well, and partly because I, you know, not being an office person. Right. Like, I, I, you know, it's not like, oh, I'm having this event in conference room C and I need to invite Joe and Sally and Sam, mm -hmm. you know, that that makes sense. You know, I don't you know, my my events are, you know, I own only a person, only a person when I'm talking to someone. And then I'm like, that sort of feels weird to invite them to an event rather than just like I'm talking to them in email or on the phone already to set the event up. Right. So. Right. So. Uh, so, yeah. So I and. I mean, I think actually feel like it's gotten more reliable. In the past, it got it was utterly confusing as to like whether or not you had accepted, and if you had accepted, how you could de-accept if something changed. Or I know. haven't had much trouble with it as long as the other person is on iOS and the address they gave me, uh, or, or you know, macOS in the Apple ecosystem, but gave me a an Apple ID to share with them. As soon as uh, it's Gmail, it's at about a thirty-seven percent success rate. Maybe that's the problem. Is yeah. that you know I've had it enough randomly where I don't know what they're using, and I I put something in, and all you know, just who knows what happens. So, all right. Uh, well, hey, but, it, uh, it sounds like you're still on the quest. I'm and, still on uh, the quest. I haven't gotten that notification again. Just saying, you know, we're <laughs> we're four, four minutes in. We'll see if it comes back in five minutes. But we'll see. oh yeah, now we have to we have to vamp for at least one more minute to make sure that we don't. <laughs> <laughs> Whether we see that one come out. Well, if uh, um, I'll put it in the what, show what, notes if you do succeed. Or yeah, right. So, I, mean, I mean, what's sort of annoying about this is it feels like it feels like this is this is, you know, there, this is a solvable problem. Obviously, like yeah. in your face and Cal Alarm and do have all solved it in various ways. And the question is, am I being weird and like in the sense of like, oh, I need a third party app to do this? Or, or am I correct in that this is a general desire? Um, that lots of people would appreciate and are never going to go find a third-party app for. And so if there was an alarm type of notification that you could, that you could, you, I mean, right now it's, all, it's, it's app specific, right? You know, notificate all reminders use the same one. Um, but if you could set, specify, oh, this is the kind of reminder I want to get for this, uh, the alert kind of alert I want to get for this this particular reminder, this particular event. Would people appreciate that? Is that something that Apple should add? Wait, we should we say you should? Should we? <laughs> you shouldn't before say we should. got on the air, we talked about not using the word should. <laughs> <laughs> Apple should could add if they cared about us. Yeah, but no. Yeah, that's a good that's a good question. I I don't know that I necessarily needed, except for those times that I absolutely needed it. Right. You know? There have been those right. times just like total brain fart, missed it, lost it. Yeah. But they're uncommon for me. But when it happens, oh my gosh, why didn't Apple give me a way to do that? Right. And 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 and, and you and I are time specific people. There's mm -hmm. lots of people who are really not. Yeah. And do they care? Maybe they don't care. Maybe they're just totally cool with being late for everything in sight. Um, and it just doesn't bother them. I remember and my so brother would, telling me, he called a friend of his and said, uh, hey, you want to go to the mall on Tuesday? She said, okay. And he hung up. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't say which mall. <laughs> they didn't say what time. They said Tuesday. Which Tuesday? It I worked mean, out. Yeah. They found each other. <laughs> no. No, I'm not that uh, person. 
<laughs> yeah. So, so I don't know. I mean, it does feel like one of those slightly type A personality things, but, but, you know, I, I, I don't know. It feels to me like Apple could add that and it would be appreciated by a non-trivial subset of the population. On the other hand, it's not like Apple puts a lot of attention into calendars and reminders these days, right? Well, those are both they're... mature apps that don't get a lot of attention. In iOS 18 and, and Sequoia, aren't we supposed to be getting a new integrated reminders will be inside calendar thing? I think there is something with reminders will show up inside calendar. Yeah. Um, which, of course, like Fantastic Cal and Busy Cal have had for a while. Like 1978, um, I think they, they yeah. put those features in. Yeah, <laughs> right. which of course they could. Um, so, like, so, so, yeah, it does. I mean, yes, Apple's paying a little bit of attention, but it doesn't feel like they're putting in they're not they're not they're not they're not focusing hard on it yeah. shall we say <laughs> yeah. and maybe it's just one of those things it's the quote-unquote third-party opportunity you yeah. know and that's good you know so that's good, right? you know um and you know you get in your face you get cow alarm you get do you're gonna be you're gonna be solid right except but yeah we need in your face do and this new one cow alarm we put all three of those yeah. on our phones uh, on our devices we should show up Right. <laughs> right up until we say, you're not the boss of me, and we turn them off. <laughs> All right. Well, with that, Adam, Precisely. Uh, we, uh, of course, everybody can find you at tidbits.com. And if you do have comments on this, this will, of course, be a blog post. And if you've just listened to it from the blog, you'll know to leave a comment and say, is Adam nuts or on this particular topic? Or is this <laughs> well, something yes, you... <laughs> but I can, and... I can be nuts and right. There's two, there's not, they're not mutually exclusive. <laughs> For sure. That's great. So uh, make comments, make comments on the blog post and let us know what you think. All right. Thanks, Adam. We will see you uh, probably in about a month, I think, right? Uh, we will. And I will let you know if that reminder ever comes back. It hasn't yet. So I'll just okay. Say I'm going to have to run my own test now to prove what I thought I knew. All right. Thanks a lot, Adam. All right. Take it easy. I hope you enjoyed this episode of Chit Chat Across the Pond Light. Did you notice there weren't any ads in the show? That's because this show is not ad-supported. It's supported by you. If you learned something, or maybe you were just entertained, consider contributing to the Podfeet podcast. You can do that by going over to podfeet.com and look for the big red button that says support the show. When you click that button, you're going to find different ways to contribute. If you'd like to do a one-time donation, you can click the PayPal button. If you want to make a recurring contribution, click the weekly Patreon button. You're only charged when I publish an episode of the NoSillaCast, which, let's face it, it's every single week, so I don't charge Patreon for Chit Chat Across the Pond Light or Programming by Stealth episodes. Another way to contribute is to record a listener contribution. It's a great way to help the NoSillaCast ways learn from you and takes a little bit of the load off of me doing all the work. If you want to contact me for any reason, you can email me at allison at podfeed.com and I really encourage you to follow me on Mastodon at podfeet at chaos.social. Maybe you want to talk to the other NoSilla castaways. You can do that in our Slack group at podfeet.com slash Slack. Thanks for listening and stay subscribed.